Welcome to Let's Talk Possibility. Tonight we're talking with Steve Becker around designing sustainably. Welcome to Let's Talk Possibility, the show about where we explore what's possible. And today we're going to be exploring about designing sustainably. In the studio with me, I'm Talana Simpson, is my co-host, Jack Milan. Hi there. How's it? And our guest, Steve Becker. Hello. And our producer, Tim Hark. And yeah, so we are going to be exploring all about sustainability today. And Jack, I was thinking... Um, I don't know if you remember when we went to, to Plet, I think it was over Easter, or we were driving back May, from Plet, I should say. Yeah. It was May. May yeah. month. It was it, yeah. Okay, we were driving back. I don't know, we were doing a, a late, late night, uh, and I was... It was a through-nighter. <laughs> <laughs> All night. We drove through the night. It was, it was I don't know how you did that, because I was battled to stay awake. <laughs> I just remember in, my, in and out of my days waking up and like hearing Tony Robbins talking away, and he was talking about... Um, the, the, what's it, the tipping point? Malcolm Gladwell's yeah, tipping point. Yeah. And I remember just saying, he's no, 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 about to connect us. And I go, Jack, I'm a connector, hey. <laughs> go, go, go. Said, okay, cool. Fall back to sleep. And a later, there would be something else, and I'd wake up. Uh, who's a maven? Who do we know that's a maven? <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Well, Steve is, is the maven that I know. I've never met someone who knows so much about so many things and specifically around sustainability. So, so welcome, Stevie. Yeah, <laughs> welcome so good here, having you here. Yeah, so welcome, Stevie. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> There's an echo. It's a really welcome, <laughs> Stevie. <laughs> Stevie. The double welcome. I don't know if we know a salesman, though. That's the one in the, the three in the tipping point. We're trying to think. We, so we need to still find our salesmen in, our, in, our, fit in, the in our network. I know some other people are really well good salesmen, but they're not kind of in our network. We, ha we have to get them in. But yes. We have to connect to them. Find the connectors. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be connected. <laughs> Mm. But, but yes, as a, beside just being a maven, which is just someone who has a wealth of information, Steve, you also are an entrepreneur. Um, you've been doing design work, graphic design for, for many years. And more recently, have you started um, Permacraft? Um, so Permacraft is your, is your company? Yes. Okay. It's, 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 I wouldn't call it a company as such at this point. It's more like an initiative. Okay. Okay. Um, I've I've been researching sustainability and permaculture principles for many many years now, hmm. and as um, mavens do, yes, <laughs> for research. And so I'm getting to the point now where I can start sharing that information with a lot of people, and obviously practicing a lot of this stuff as well. What I'm just thinking here, what what because you mentioned you come from the the design mm. side of things. What made you go to the to this the sustainability and 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 what led you to permacraft, yeah. It, it was just, I, I suppose it was the waste that I saw happening with, you know, for instance, I get a client who wanted a, a, a whole brand identity package and they wanted all kinds of things that just weren't really necessary. And I, it just got me thinking about it. And being design and there being so many other things that can be designed, I've, I've started looking into, into applying it to, to all sorts of other things, like architecture. I would take it so far as, because I'm a bit of a car nut, <laughs> um, you know, to design and redesign transportation methods. Okay, well. Mm. <laughs> yes, so, so in the coaching work I do, I've always had this thing about sustainability, that the, the changes I help my clients make, they must be real and lasting, sustainable change. Mm. So I thought I was doing, you know, understood what sustain sustainability was and all of that and, and <coughs> explaining how, you know, the meta coaching that we use and the specific style and the methodology can create such, such sustainable change. And then met Steve, who is um, the expert on sustainability such that we actually nicknamed him Sus Steve. Sus Steve. Sustainable I've Steve. taken that nickname and embraced it. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been meeting up for um, the best pizza in Joburg. You know, my, my favorite pizza Your favorite place. place. Um, got Percy's Pizza in, in, yeah. in Marincha. And we have had so many amazing discussions there over pizza that 
my whole view on what sustainability is has grown and just expanded such that, that now the way I am thinking of, of developing my, my company is changing. Literally, as, as we, what we're talking about tonight, designing yes. sustain, sustainable business principles into the way I grow, mm. grow my business and into to everything that, f- that I make, the, the manuals, the business cards. Yeah, sustainable, like that, I, so think, I think a lot of people have an idea of sustainable is all to do with environment, just environment. I've got to plant a tree, and that is correct. Yeah. But everything we do has an effect. Mm. At the end of the day, I think that's kind of what you. you so it's, yes. about, it's about designing with with <coughs> conscience. It, it doesn't matter what it is that you're designing, whether it is some kind of mm. business process or whatever the case may be. Yeah. it's having a conscious and conscience with it, I and like, knowing I that like. it's going to have an effect down the line. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So we found this really cool little video. It's an animated movie that explains sustainability <laughs> with this lovely little character giving it a lecture in the earth and <laughs> and all that. But um. So there's a lot in there in that video around what's, what involves sustainability, that is we need, it, we need to be designing sustainably in order to protect the earth, that, the air that we breathe, the water that we consume, mm. and the, um, what's the food that we, we produce. How, how do you, the concept tonight is talking about why, why we need to be looking at designing sustainably, but what, what do we actually mean? So I know we, we start on it, but how do you define mm. it, Steve? It's... It's smart design. Um, so uh, when I say smart, it is coming up with innovative ideas um, using natural um, renewable resources as much as possible, yeah. minimizing the use of non-renewable resources like fossil fuels, um, and also reducing waste and recycling wherever possible, and designing stuff with that in mind. Um, and it's, it really is for, for the good of, of people as well as the planet. Mm. Um, it's it's it very systemic yes, kind of approach. It, that very much so. Um, it's, it's kind of a philosophy, really. Um, and, and that's what I got from all the reading <coughs> that, you know, the, and, and all our chats over those pizza, <laughs> the pizza yeah. evenings we've you been having. You, you obviously enjoy the pizza. I enjoy the pizza. <laughs> Like no, but they, yeah, they enjoy the pizza and the conversation. That there's just <laughs> something about yeah. pieces that that is just. Mm. Uh, I suppose it's these kind of conversations. They, that, they that just that open my mind. Yeah. And, yes. um, it's like I'm off track. It's oh, you're saying it's philosophy. <laughs> that, that for me, it's, it's almost a lifestyle choice, and it that's is. what I've come Very to learn. It's not just okay. This is how I do coaching. It's actually mm. everything that that I do now can be a choice. It's a conscious choice around how. Can it be more sustainable? Mm. So, so when I when when we we spoke about designing sustainably, to me it, it's about how do we design our lives so that it's sustainable and, and sustainable in a way that it 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 impacts the system we're in, the world we're in, in, in a positive mm. way, in mm. a way that that is for the benefits of the system. That's it. The, 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 what, 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 what kind of what I'm getting is we're not looking at just what's immediately happening right now. What's the effect of what we're doing right now? But also look at what's the effect of what we're doing right now in the long term. Exactly. Kind of. Mm. Okay. So, so what are some of the examples of, of design? And we, we've touched with it. Obviously, architecture is a huge Yeah, I mean, the, there's architecture, there's transportation. Um, l- like I said earlier, business processes. Um, you could go so far as uh, designing leisure activities <laughs> with sustainability in mind. Mm-hmm. You know, so, so in other words, people go and visit some beautiful parts of Africa that come from overseas but while they're there they're also doing a little bit for whatever community they're visiting whatever the case may be that's all designed and I mean those are just a couple of the uh, like transportation and architecture they're, they're some of the more obvious ones but it can really be applied to all human endeavor mm. Mm. okay <laughs> Who's gonna? Who's gonna go? <laughs> so so what, maybe you should bring it a bit more local then, because obviously it's all human endeavor. It's very big. It's our whole lives. It's obviously it's it's a way. Not only me as a, you know, in a small young entrepreneur, where I do my business is where corporates run their business. It's um, so it's architecture. It's the way you build malls versus where you build houses. So what are some of the things that are happening here in South Africa? Some of the, some of the examples. I know both of you have have hands-on experience with mm. South African case studies 
the people, you know, organizations or people who are, are mm. thinking sustainably designing. Well, you know, it's, it's amazing with, uh, with our coffee chats that we've been having and going for our pizza and meeting some fascinating people. I initially thought that there weren't that many people that were directly involved with that kind of stuff, but they seem to be popping out of the woodwork mm. now. Mm. I mean, uh, it's at one it's of like the movements. Yes, it is very it, much yeah. so. I mean, I th very often people just don't realize that it is really happening around them locally right <laughs> now. Um, yes, maybe a little bit of it is sort of under the radar. You know, it's kind of underground, but it's it's getting out there now. Um, I've, I've, uh, one guy that I have in mind is um, he's involved with um, setting up uh, off the grid energy production systems for big complexes, houses, shopping malls, all of that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, as as well as um, solar heat pumps, where yeah. he's um, taking out people's geysers, uh, some really big houses that he's done, where the house had like four geysers. And is putting in the solar heat pump system where there's instant hot water on, on demand, uses very little energy, it wastes very little water because you're not running your tap, you know, before you have a shower in order to wait for it to get warm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's just what, one of the small elements of, of a lot of what's going on at the moment. I think in South Africa, I just thought of that. Um, in South Africa, we're also kind of in a position where we're almost forced in a way to look at especially power. Um, especially <coughs> with ESCOM and what's going on around that, especially looking at other ways to power ourselves and our houses. Not, I mean, everybody's buying generators, great, okay, but what is something we can do that's actually going to be permanent to make our houses independent? Well, as yeah. I said to you, we're driving here, they, I was reading, um, I forgot this, they, there's apparently in the crew, yeah, I think it is in the crew or, or the Kalahari. Kalahari, I don't yeah. know. I'll, maybe I'll look it up. Somewhere down there. Somewhere here in South Africa. It's going to be the One biggest the solar regions. powered. <laughs> oh, help me, what's the name? Cre to create uh, energy. I actually know the engineers it's involved there. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's going to be yeah. the biggest one in the world. It's going to be here in South Africa. Yeah. No, it's no, no, the article we read it's today there, is yeah. it's. it's mm. um, I'll put the link in the sh show notes. I'll find it. But so yeah, but what about something that, like there's this actual? We were talking about how how councils are now rating. You were talking about a four star rating. Yeah, I think green uh, building. Yeah, I think system, uh, you know, my background. Obviously, I have a lot of construction background, and um, some of the project we've we've been involved with. Um, you know, there's something called the Green Building Council, mm -hmm. and um, they kind of regulate and have certain laws regarding the design and that kind of stuff getting this the building you're building as green as possible now it's obviously it's a it's a very bureaucratic system and a point system and so it 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 it, it governs and regulates the way you build it um, and puts measures in place to reward you for the greener you go okay. you know the the better they'll give you the reward so a five star green rated building is is the best you can do in south africa we have uh, the Ned Bank uh, building in Santon, which is the first four-star rated office block in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And then a building I was involved with is the Villa Mall, which is outside Pretoria, which is the first uh, four-star design rated um, shopping mall in South Africa. So yes, it's there's there's definitely a movement in terms of design and in, terms of in, in the building industry for our buildings to be more sustainable as such mm. to be to and to part of it is it actually sounds like then so so government so is talking about designing sustainably they're all, all organized you know there's it's it's bigger than just just us individuals mm. wanting yeah. to live in, in a sustainable way yeah it's not it's just somebody who wants to make make their house mainstream. nice it's it's becoming an industry it is um, yeah. and we There's spoke about that earlier yeah that. yeah so if you look at you look at architects these days as well they associate themselves with green star rated or um, associations so they can learn more in order to design greener mm. and in order to be seen as somebody who wants to design a more sustainable. So we just ask, what does the star stand for? It's the ratings, basically, it's anything from a, obviously a one star to five star. But one to three basically doesn't mean a lot. It, it, 
what is it? Maybe their question is, what is it's the it's it's measured on a lot of things. Um, you know, your building comprises of all its elements. So you're looking at you know the air conditioning, the the actual structure, the actual the material used, the, the orientation. Well. Yeah, um, even the construction process itself, the recycling of that, um, the paints you use. So all of those play a part. And the more renewable or recyclable all of those are, Does at the end of the day. Location. Yes. Yeah, they look at, yeah, we actually all the materials that, 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 that goes into the building from the moment it's made as such, where it comes from, goes to site, gets put in the building. The waste then also <coughs> gets tracked where it goes off site and what happens to it there. So literally, I think you, you, you call it birth to birth or cradle. Cradle, 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 cradle to cradle. cradle. Yeah. So every piece of material goes from cradle to cradle tracked. Um, and that's how, how meticulous they are mm. about what you're doing with that building. Yeah. So it's interesting. No, the industry, from my side that I see it anyway, is, is moving big time that way. Uh, and I think uh, largely as well, it's, um, there's a lot of bigger industries that are really taking it up at the moment. Mm. And the individuals are kind of being left behind because mm. they don't really know what is available to them, mm. what they can do mm. in order to be more sustainable and design their lives sustainably. So a big part is, is obviously education because I think what we've been talking about as well is what I've learned just from, from our pizza chats is, is that there's so much that is available. The mm. technology is here. Mm. We can live sustainably. We can live in a way that has a – or looks after the environment, has a positive impact, if I, if I can even call it that, on, on the environment. But we're not choosing it. We're not um, asking for it because we don't know it's there. Mm. And yet the technology is – and it's a lot more affordable – correct me if affordable and accessible than, than we actually think yeah, I mean very often if, if for instance you, you wanted to install like your own solar energy system or something like that it can be expensive uh, up front yes. but it's, it's down the line you're not going to be paying for energy the way you used to you, you might be paying off your solar energy system I mean you get systems that can run all of your energy you can go completely off the grid Mm. It's a little extreme, but mm. yeah, I mean, why not do it? <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to say as well that sustainability is not, it's, it's not only about an environmental awareness. It's obviously about um, social, yeah. um, improving people's lives in general, uh, trying to alleviate poverty as much as possible. And you can use design to do all of that stuff sustainably and start uplifting not just the earth but the people as well and it's kind of a full circle because if you uplift the people then they know how to uplift the earth and then in turn the earth continues to uplift them and it just gets better and better and we like better and better yes <laughs> 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 So no, we touched on, on a bit about the, the green business opportunities. So I know, like, for example, you, that's part of your business strategy is, mm. is being more green, as you always put it in inverted commas. But, but tell us a bit about that. So what are you doing that, that makes your, you unique from other designers? I mean, just from the graphic design elements, um, it, it would be a case of, uh, for instance, if you were going to print business cards for people, um, try and find a printer, I'm yet to find one. <laughs> you can use uh, completely recycled paper as well yeah. as vegetable inks, um, which, and, I mean, it, that is about as recyclable or, or sustainable as, as you can get. As you can make. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's just one of the elements. Um, another thing is, you know, if, if somebody, for instance, wanted uh, complimentary slips or something, and it's not something that people really use anymore. Yeah. Rather advise them, listen, guys, don't go with that. You can come up with a better solution. I mean, maybe take it as far as combining certain elements. So instead of having a standard business card, you have something that's business card shaped or sized, but it's almost like a little mini fold-out brochure. 
and there it's, it's serving a dual function mm. and not using as, as much resources. Even though it's recycled, try and be sparing. <laughs> so, as a, as a normal guy on the street, okay, what, what do I do? Because um, I think a lot of people out there, you know, all these green things are going on, but there's, there's, and I think we've we've proven this by looking at stuff and finding what what we found for the show. <coughs> you know, there's a, a wealth of information out there, um, but you know, Mr. Joe Blog on the street, um, who is working hard, he's got his wife and his kids, and what does he do? How does he start? What does he? I mean. How does he make this more of his li a lifestyle choice? Yeah. How does he start choosing it? Uh, I agree with you. It is. It, it can get very complicating, uh, complicated, and be overwhelming for people. Mm. Um, a lot of people now, when 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 I mention sustainable design and permaculture principles, which is a completely n different topic, <laughs> <laughs> um, they they think of growing your own food, so having a vegetable garden, fruit trees, all of that kind of stuff. Now, based on what's, what, what you just said now, not everybody has the time to do that. So mm. rather go out and find a market. They're popping up all over the place, like natural or organic, organic markets. food markets. Um, and go and buy your vegetables, your fruits, all of that kind of stuff, which most of the time is, is sourced from a farm, which is pretty nearby. Mm. So there's, there's none of that embodied energy involved with it. Mm. Because growing own stuff um, requires a lot of energy and stuff, which the farmers do a lot greener than you could. I suppose that's possible, yes. I mean, yeah. Okay. You could essentially create your own little ecosystem at home. So, you know, with, with a worm farm and all of that. And enjoy the time that you're spending in the garden. I mean, a lot of people are, are super keen on that mm. at the moment. So when I mention the concept to them, they're like, yes, that's what I want to do. Maybe they want to get a little bit more in touch with nature, enjoy it while you're doing it, mm. and you're producing your own food. Any waste that comes from that food, set up a worm farm as well. Um, feed any waste, like organic waste, back to the worms. They'll give you nice soil, and then your plants just get better. Yeah. But I think part of it, just looking at organic markets and that, is, mm. is when you're you, you, um, supporting local entrepreneurs, if you want mm. to call local businesses, that there was part of the whole designing sustainability or the the movement is that and you, you talk a bit about the carbon footprint versus the embodied energy so to me buying locally and i don't know if you want to just expand on those concepts but it, there's less embodied energy in what mm. you are using purchasing mm. <laughs> uh, yeah it, a, a lot of things which which are produced are very often being yeah in south africa a lot of stuff is imported, including food. A lot, yeah. Um, and it's a case of what, what effort went into delivering that product to, to your, your door. door. Um, where does it come from? How was it produced? Um, were there all sorts of chemicals and stuff that, that went into it? Um, how was it transported? Yeah. Mm. How is it packaged? Does it have a whole lot of unnecessary packaging? which very often is the case, you go to any of the shops. Um, whereas if, if you buy from an organic market or something, you, you're taking that Local. food in your hands, you're putting it into a little bag that you brought with you. and I mean, it's Yeah, and it probably went straight from the ground into the farmer's that. little bucky to the mm. markets. Mm. So it's mm. a lot less, so there's less embodied energy. Yeah. So you, do you want to mention the, the TED Talk? Yeah, well, that, that's one of the other points. Um, so the Alex Stefan is, is a guy who he runs a, an organ a website called worldchanging.com. He's one of the founders of it. And that's one of the, the resources we want to share. There's a wealth of content on the articles galore. That's where I find out that South Africa's grow, you know, got the biggest solar power station mm -hmm. or developing it this year. Um, he gives us talk and it's a really nice summary of what we're talking about. It goes from, I think some of his points were really about why. Why should we be designing sustainably? And I think we, we mentioned some of the, the benefits that one, it's, um, it's more comfortable. 
there you go. It's, it's more comfortable in that it's, you know, you turn on your tap and you have hot water. Hmm. The the environments you were talking about, that you know, the buildings, <coughs> you know, for, for business and that is actually hmm. because of the natural lighting and the way the, the air flows, it's actually much more comfortable than the air conditioning and the, and the artificial lighting. Hmm. So that, there's actually levels of comfort in designing sustainably. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty much it's to, cost- to, to improve conditions, mm. um, uh, aspects of life, just to make it that much better. But, but then obviously there's, there's also the, the factor that one has to consider, which is preparing for change. Because mm. with all natural resources, which are not renewable, being tapped into, the time is going to come where we do run out. Yes. And if we haven't come up with su- sustainable design solutions right now, what happens to our future? You know, suddenly we, d- we don't have oil, we don't have petrol, as you know it. What do we do then? I think that's important why we need to, why we need to know the whys. <laughs> um, yeah, why do we need to do this? And, and the, the, I think, like you say, the effects of it not happening and the effects of if we do change certain things or look at doing things more sustainable, what's going to be the outcome mm. and what are we going to get from it? Mm. Change is inevitable. Change is <laughs> inevitable. Yeah, it's, it's happening. Yeah. So I'm like in that, in that video, um, the guy talks about another world is possible and then he actually goes on saying no, actually not only that another world is possible, it is here already. Yeah. We are living in another world mm. and so we need to do, um, find a way to I don't know what I was trying to say there. <laughs> Doesn't matter. But now the world is possible, <laughs> which obviously we love the possibility yeah. in the yeah. show, yeah. but that it's here. And I think that's what I was trying to get to is that there is so much we can actually do right now in our data. So another one thing that, that you know, Joe blogs, as you're saying, could start doing is the recycling. Mm. There are a lot more facilities now for recycling paper, glass, um, metals and that, that you can create a little system in your house and Sign up for, for consciously do it. Yes. Yeah, choose to do it and just being a bit, bit more aware, I suppose, of th- the things that we buy and where we buying them from. Mm. Can we buy more local, less packaged mm. kind of things and yes. and the recycling? And I think education is a, a big part. We, we're talking about um, your your little boy Josh and how he's walking around the garden and and saw. Some parsley, and it's like, look, Dad, you can eat that. <laughs> it's parsley, <laughs> and I was like, no, he's three years old, and you can identify and he knows that already. parsley he's, he's in a garden. Away. Yes. So, so, you, so I think part of the future is not only we, we need to design sustainably for our future generations, you know, oh, our cliche for the for our grandkids and that, but it's part of that is teaching our current kids mm. to to think this way because they are going to be the ones that become the architects. Mm. And the car designers, mm. Josh, I'm sure, is going to be a car designer. And uh, <laughs> he's so into his cars. Is he into cars? He's very into cars. Yeah. Or maybe an architect, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with your influence. There will definitely be sustainable aspects it, in whatever yeah. he does. No, he is, bec- because yeah. that's what he, and that's the, the TV shows for, for kids that, that, that mm. grabs his attention. Mm. as the ones that talk about gardening and, and the environment. Okay. And, um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, Alex Stefan. His, I think he's, it's his website, worldchanging.com. Yes. Um, yeah, for, edu- for educating ourselves, mm. that is an amazing resource. Um, Definitely. For, it's got so many a nice short little bits of information. Mm. So and if you guys need to, need to get some more information, pop on there. We'll p- put the links on. Yeah. And the it other site we were going to put there was, was um, design change, designcanchange.org. And specifically around designing aspects, I, I think it's aimed at design graphic specific designs yes. specifically. Mm. But if you think about it, that's a huge part. That's that's everything from the way we design adverts, our business cards, mm. our letterheads, um, packaging, Spot on. all yeah, of nice. that, and then the mm. printing of all of that. And then how do we transport all of that? Gene? Do we need to put so much packaging around things? Is it so it's in a fact, great resource. And so I just want to say, on, on the resources page of that website, I saw yes. there's a lot of ebooks Plenty that you can download yes. and, and other, thi- other mm. things that are happening around designing sustainably. Mm. The thing is, that website, and I was going to say now, that's actually, I believe, now that I uh, spotted it again, um, that's what got me on this path. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. There we go. <laughs> and a lot of the information that's on there, can, mm. it, it doesn't just have to be applied to graphic design. 
no, as I said, there's, there's so many everything. interesting things. Yes. It's, mm. <laughs> Yeah, so so very much. I think it, it was talking about the, the benefits of of trying to think about this and the whys was was, you know, just because it can improve our quality of life, mm. the actual experience. Mm. There can be cost implications for us, so we can actually save money. It, it may be initial lump sum, but long term. Yeah, I think um, you know, for me, uh, just thinking about about it from the average guy out there, uh, you always want to, you always trying to work on your budget and you know, not spend too much and spend your money on where you want to spend it. And So if you understand how these things can actually be better for your budget in the long term. And they pay for themselves. And it pays for itself. Yeah. By just educating yourself, how can I do it? What can I do in my capacity to implement these things and how how is it going to benefit me mm. specifically financially and obviously the other ways um, for a better quality of life. For a better well, quality yes. of life. And then obviously securing the future. Because you, you mentioned earlier as well, I mean, it's not that we are giving up our quality of life. Mm. Um, it's an understanding how we can have the same quality of life. If not better on some aspects. Okay, yeah. yeah. So we've just, I've seen we've got a question um, oh. just been asked about the, the, the solar thing I keep talking about. South Africa unveils plans for <coughs> world's Biggest solar power plant, and it's um. So yeah, so there's the link there. <laughs> to sum up, I'm I just really I'm so excited about just the concept of designing sustainably that that, that I think just understanding so much more now that it is a lifestyle's choice. It's a philosophy. It's not just little things. Oh, we we need to be you know environmentally friendly. Yes. There's so much more to it, and that it's we can be more proactive yeah, around it. I think for me as well, I th yeah. It's always been to me the sustainability has always been something okay. If you, it's always been about vegetables. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good place to start. You know, <laughs> but I, think it's, I think it's where most people think about it yes. you know, is, is, is as getting a vegetable garden. Okay, yes, that's part of it, but actually, every part of our life is part of of looking at yes. what is sustainable and and, uh, and like you said, it's about making those conscious choices, like choosing does this impact. It? The system, I mean, everyone in it, the people, the environment. It's the not animals. just at home either. I mean, wherever you work, if, if you work at a massive corporate office or whatever the case may be, as an individual, start recycling stuff and making yes. sure that when something is printed, there's no waste going mm. into it. So I, I, the list can go on. Um, so, yes, I, I think it really comes down to individuals. It's starting to change our mindset, see the advantages of going this route and just doing it, setting an example to everybody else. So it is achievable for us. Mm. Okay. Awesome. Well, tomorrow night is Let's Talk Geek. Mm. Is it? Yeah, that's tomorrow night's show. And we are back in two weeks' time. Very exciting. Yeah, we're moving to, to Monday night. To Monday so night, yes. we look forward to having you join us there. And Stephen, so Steve. Thank, Steve, you so thank you so much for sharing your thank knowledge. You. I'm sure we'll have you back to, to get more into some of the of the concepts because it's just a wealth of... Yeah, I think it's such a massive... massive I think, yes, we can continue the conversation. For sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so thanks so much for yes. coming. And thanks, right. everyone. We'll catch you in two weeks. See you guys later. Let's see what's possible. Bye.